day to you learners. My name is Miss Paspanojka and I will be taking you for English. Today we are going to talk about the subject verb agreement. By the end of this lesson, you must be able firstly to explain the rules of subject verb agreement. Secondly, you must be able to identify plural or singular noun and verbs in a sentence. Thirdly and lastly, you must be able to identify and correct errors in subject-verb agreement. Why is it so important for us to learn subject-verb agreement? It helps us to unify sentences and make them more clear. So, before we go more into our subject-verb agreement, we have to understand what are we saying when we say subject-verb agreement? Let's split these words and make them more understandable. What do we mean when we say the subject? We are talking about the noun in a sentence. What is a noun? That's the naming word. Or maybe we are talking about the pronoun that is the replacement of a noun. For example, maybe our noun is the girl. The girl is, girl is our noun. And when we say pronoun, we are saying we are replacing girl with she. So we are saying the subject in a sentence might be girl or might be she. And when we talk about the verb, we are talking about the doing word in the sentence or the auxiliary verb in the sentence. For example, examples of verbs are like eat, walk, etc., etc. And then... I know most learners, they know what is a noun and they know what is a verb, but they might not understand what do we mean when we say there must be an agreement between the verb and the subject. The agreement is when we talk about quantity. The quantity of the subject has to determine the verb. If the subject is in singular, The verb also has to be in singular. If the noun is in plural, the verb also has to be in plural. So this is what we mean when we talk about the subject-verb agreement. We are saying the noun or the pronoun in a sentence has to agree with the verb as far as quantity is concerned. So what do we mean if we say define verb? It is the relationship between the subject and the verb as far as quantity is content. As I was saying, we were saying the noun, that's the subject, and the verb, that's the doing word in a sentence, is to agree in quantity. Let's uh, actually explain more when we talk about the plural and the singular. What do we mean when we say something which is in singular? A singular not means something that is just one, not two or more. And when we talk about plural, we are talking about two or more things. Let's take, for example, uh, when we talk about um, girl, we say girls. But now there's no need for us to explain the verbs, the nouns when in the plural, but it is actually important for us to know when we say verbs are in plural. For example, the girl is. That's the auxiliary verb that determines that the subject is in singular. Then when there are many or two or more, we say the girls are. So the auxiliary verb in singular is is, and then in plural is are. Or maybe we, are, we want to change them into past tense. Is will be was. The teacher was very angry today or yesterday. And when we want to put it in plural, we say the teacher's way. Angry yesterday. Then there are actually the verbs, the actual verbs, not these are uh, auxiliary verbs that we have to determine when we are using the subject verb agreement. We have to add an S at the end of each word if, we are if the subject is in singular. 
Let's take for example, she likes watching this movie every weekend. Or maybe when they are more, we say they, they like watching this movie every weekend. Please note, we say it in singular, we add an S at the end of the verb, and in plural, we don't add anything, it remains the same. Now, let's try to use uh, the sign of verb agreement in sentences so that it can be more clear. We are saying that, let's take for example, we have a sentence like, the toilet next to the manager's manager's offices smells uh, smells fresh it is very important for you to identify the noun the verb in the sentences and more, the nouns that we are using or the noun that is determining the verb in the sentences. For, uh, for example, now let's try to identify the nouns that we have in this sentence. We have toilet, we have managers, we have offices. And what are the verbs in the sentence? We have smells. And fresh is the adjective. So we are saying between toilet, managers, offices, which, ones is de which one is determining smells? Which one is being talked about here? Is it the toilet? Is it the manager's office? Or is it the offices alone that we are talking about? The toilet next to the manager's office smells fresh. Manager's office are called appositives. Appositives are those phrases or nouns that are put, put uh, before or after a noun that we are using in a sentence. The sentence that we are using, or the verb that we are using, sorry, is toilet. And we, if you look closely, you see that toilet is in singular. So what do we do now? We add an S on our verb. The toilet next to the manager's office smells fresh let's say now there are more than one uh, to, uh one toilet we say the toilets next to the managers office offices smell fresh Just because uh, our noun is in plural, we don't add an S here. This is what I was saying when we said when the verb is in singular, we add an S, and when the verb is in plural, we add an, we don't add anything, it remains the same. So the rule is, when the noun is in plural, make sure the verb is in plural. When the noun is in singular, make sure the noun is also in singular. Now, let's try to use an example, use the auxiliary is or are. Okay, learners, uh, let's try to use the example using is or are after this break. Welcome back, learners. Let's take another example. We might have an exa the sentence like, the commander the 
commander is the subject, army is the subject, and the verb is lives. Now, the army, like I said before, we have what we call the appositives, whereby appositive, we are talking about of the army is in a positive, which is in a sentence, which is giving us more information about the noun that we want to use, which is the commander. The commander of what? Of the army. So the appositive is the subject in the sentence that gives us the more information about the main uh, noun that we are using. So we are saying the commander is in singular and our verb also has been added in S, which means it's also in singular. Or we can put the commanders in plural. The commanders of the army live down the road. The commanders, commanders is in plural and live is also in plural. Most learners, they get confused, especially on adding an S on a verb. Why? Just because when we are talking about just nouns, we add an S when we talk about plurals. Then we don't add an S when it is in singular. But here it is the opposite. We add an S when it is in singular and we leave it as it is in when it is in plural. Now, let's try to uh, use subject verb agreement using the auxiliary verb is and are. Let's try to identify the nouns that are in the sentence. We have novel. We have Wale, Sonika. Then we have the auxiliary is. So, which one are we using, the novel or the Wale Sonika? Wale Sonika is in a positive, so we are using novel. And our novel is in singular, so which means we use is when our subject or when our noun is in singular, we use is. The novel by Wale Sonika is very known. Say we are talking about five or six novels written by Wale Sonika, we say the novels by Wale Sonika are Very well. Novels is now in plural, so we use a. We can use another example. The rock at the top of the hill is very large. The rocks at the top of the hill are very large. Our main subject is rock and the appositive is you, so we are not going to use that one is now our auxiliary has been determined by rock. And here the rocks are more than two, or maybe there are two or more, then which means our auxiliary will be a. Ah. So this is uh, how we change the subject verb agreement or how we use the subject verb agreement when we're using the auxiliary is or the auxiliary a. Ah. Now, let's try to use um, just one example of was and where. Uh, we use the, the auxiliary is and are and we use the verbs adding an s. Now we want to use the auxiliary was. Which one is our subject that we are using to determine the verb? Because now we have isa and we have jo. It is very important for you to understand the sentence before you uh, know which uh, subject determines the verb. 
the essay produced by Joe was very was well written. Now it is obvious that produced by Joe is our positive, so which means our subject that we're using to determine the verb is essay, and essay is in singular, which means auxiliary is supposed to be was. But let's say now uh, Joe wrote uh, two or three um, essays. We say the essays. Produced by Joe Way. Well written. Just because our subject that you're using, which is determining the verb, is essays, which is in pl uh, plural, we use way. So these are the, this is how we use our verb agreement when we are using the auxiliary was or way. We have to identify the main, uh, the main subject which determines the verb. So after the break learners, we are going to talk about the tips that we have to consider when you're talking about sub verb agreement and the rules that are there and the mistakes that learners uh, commonly do when they are writing about the sub verb agreement. Join me after this break. Back learners to the last segment of our lesson. Uh, before the break, we, I said we're going to talk about the most important tips that we have to consider when we do some a verb agreement and also the rules that we have to consider in the mistakes that you learners commonly do about such a verb agreement. So the first uh, tip that you have to consider or that you have to know is that our positives will never or can never be considered or be used as a subject of the sentence. I think I've talked about the appositive uh, before, but let, it, let me uh, give you another example. Let's say we have Chipo, the singer. Chipo is the noun. Singer is also a now, but when we're talking about as a positives, we are saying cheapo. And uh, the more information about here is the singer. So the singer here is our a positive. What do we mean when we say a positive? Like I said, it is the noun or a noun phrase that are in a sentence which gives us more information about the main subject or about the main noun. So we are saying our positives like the singer cannot be used as the, as the subject that determine the verb in a sentence. Let me give you an example uh, with a sentence. Jacob. The footballer leaves alone. Jacob is our subject and the appositive is the footballer. So since Jacob is in singular, which means our verb is supposed to be in singular. Then another tip is when you are referring to sums of money or a collective nouns that are acting as a unis un uh, unison, you have to use singular always. I'm saying when you are referring to sum of money or to collective nouns, make sure that you use singular verb. What am I saying? Let me give you an example of collective noun. Uh, let's say we have the large head of elephants. Pass 
or passes this way every day. We want to see which one is the correct verb. Is it pass or passes using the collective noun? Like I said, you have to always use a singular verb. Which one is our collective noun now? Is the large head. The large head is our collective noun of what? All of elephants, which is in plural, but we are going to ignore it because already we have it has been put into one quantity or it has been to put into one group or into unison. So we are going to use the singular passes this way every day. The large head of elephants. Let us not be confused by elephants, which is in plural, because the one that is determining our subject, our verb, is the collective noun large head. Another um, example is the smoke from. The village has rise or rises into the sky. Which one is our collective noun? It is the smoke of what? Of village has which is in plural, but we are going to ignore it and focus it on the smoke, which is in singular. So uh, our corrective verb is rises. The smoke from the village huts rises into the sky. So this is what you have to take seriously when you're writing some verb agreement. Make sure that the collective noun, the collective subject, or the sum of money are always in singular. Now, let's go to the rules that you have in some verb agreement and the mistakes that are commonly used by our learners. Always consider how these subjects are linked. Let's take for example, if they are linked but when they are different, it means our verb has to be in plural. But if they are linked but they are the same, which means our subject has to be in singular, our verb, sorry, has to be in singular. What am I saying? I'm saying that the goose, the goose and the chicken, it's early morning. These are two different things. We have the goose and then we have the chicken which means our verb has to be in plural. But let's say now we have uh, the compound subject like macaron and cheese is a delicious meal. Yes, they are two different things, but they are taken as one macaron and cheese. We take it as a singular thing because we consider it as one thing. Macaron and cheese is a delicious meal. Okay, um, another rule that you have to take into consideration and that always confuse our learners is when we are, when our subjects, when subjects are linked, sorry, when our subjects are linked with conjunctions, Neither, no, either, or, or, and nor. When we have uh, conjunctions like this, the quantity of the subject always determines the verb. But in most cases, the subject will be singular. Most learners, they, are, they get confused because when it is used as neither nor or either or, 
or or and no usually there will be two or more things so they will be confused not knowing which one to use the singular verb or the plural verb always use the singular verb what it may say maybe we have a sentence like a the simba or medium is bringing the book a the simba or medium is bringing the book we have simba and we have medium so most learners they are end up putting a of which these things are separate the subject simba and the subject medium have been separated by o and either so always use the singular unless if it was in plural or maybe we could say either the girls or the boys ah why are we putting uh because our subjects in the sentence boys and girls are in plural so we saying either the girls or the boys are watering the garden so this is what you mean when you say always make sure that the subject when you're using the conjunctions are in plural or in singular if they're in singular make sure that they are we use the verb or the auxiliary verb in singular uh lenas sorry i can't remember what it okay we might have a situation whereby um our conjunction we have our conjunction in the sentence but the the subjects in the sentence are both plural and singular the subject that is closest to the verb is the one that determines the verb the subject that is closest to the verb is the one that determines the verb i'm saying that it, we have neither the batches no the machines the machine operates yes intended we are saying the uh the sorry is machine the subject that is close to the verb determines the verb the but is in plural but the machine is in singular so since the machine is closer to operates is the one that determine the verb unless it was like neither the machine no the batteries operate as intended now the batches which is in plural is the one close to the verb so it determines the verb so please take into consideration we say the noun that is close to the verb determines the verb when we are using the conjunctions either no or or no so learners today we talked about subject verb agreement uh, we say that it is very important to talk about subject verb agreement because it unifies the sentences and make them more clearer and i hope today you have learned uh, to explain the rules of subject verb agreement you have uh, you are able now uh, to identify the errors and correct them in subject verb agreement and you are able to identify the singular and plural uh, verbs and nouns in a sentence thank you learners let's meet in the next lesson